What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with more Destiny 2 content. We've got a bit of a roundup in this video of new rewards inside of Season of the Worthy, but also a brand new trailer for Trials of Osiris inside of Destiny 2. So initially we'll take a look at some of the loot and stuff that they show off inside of the trailer, but then we have a bit of a loot table breakdown for Season of the Worthy itself. New items that you get from the Rasputin bunkers, the weapons, armor, and various cosmetics, but then also Trials items, Flawless loot, a couple of hidden items, and we're going to talk about weapons and weapon perk rolls that you can pick up inside of this season as well. So it is a bit of a mixed bag inside of this video guys, but if you enjoy it, a rating below really helps me out. And otherwise, let's get into it. Before we talk more in depth about loot and items inside of Season of the Worthy, there is a brand new trailer for the Trials of Osiris, so we can check some of that out right here, see a bunch of the flawless glows, elimination action, and of course, new weapons and armor in there as well. So check this out. Welcome to the trials of Saint Fourteen. Ha! A joke. Here we go. Certainly a pretty exciting trailer, and we're going to talk about some of the Trials loot in just a moment. Be sure to give us your thoughts about it down below, but now let's speak about loot tables inside of Season of the Worthy. Initially, let's speak about the Seraph Bunkers. Of course, from here we can unlock Seraph weapons and armor. And it's worth mentioning that I made a full guide to bunker unlocks and how to get the currencies and things like that yesterday, so I'll link that one down below. But the key things, of course, for armor include that it unlocks via the Season Pass, but it can also drop in the Warmind Engrams when you rank them up as well as in encrypted Warmind caches. Pretty similar to what we've seen in the past, but when it comes to Seraph weapon frames, of course the weapons drop from Warmind Engrams and caches once unlocked via the frame itself, so each of the weapon frames can of course only be purchased once the respective bunker has reached rank 3, so when you hit rank 3 on the European Dead Zone bunker, you can get the Auto Rifle, the Sidearm is available after rank 3 from the Moon, and then the Hand Cannon available after rank 3 on Io. And once you have all of the Rasputin Bunkers to rank 3, you can get the Machine Gun. And then otherwise, of course, the Shotgun and the SMG come from the Season Pass, but can also drop from Engrams and Chests once you've unlocked them. It's also worth pointing out the Warmind mods that you can pick up from each bunker, and it's worth checking these out in-game. They do use the new mechanic, dropping Warmind cells, but in order to pick them up, you need to spend 5 encrypted Warmind bits, and once again there will be 2 of them available at each of the bunkers. Now though, let's talk about Seraph weapons and perk rolls. So, initially, we have the 7th Seraph Carbine. This is a new kinetic 450 RPM auto rifle, so it's pretty stable, has decent range there. Importantly, in the magazine slot, you can get high caliber rounds, extended mag, and light mag, amongst a few other things. But for trait bonuses in slot 1, you can get hipfire grip, slide shot, fourth times the charm, threat detector, underdog, and auto loading holster. And then the second slot can get elemental capacitor, vorpal weapon, rangefinder, swashbuckler, rampage, and moving target. So, especially in this current meta, Things like Slide Shot and Fourth Times the Charm could be pretty good in that first slot, but then Rangefinder and Rampage are very good options in the second slot, but of course you can play around with the other potential bonuses. So that's the EDZ weapon, but then we have the 7th Seraph SI2, which is the sidearm that you get from the moon. So it's a 360 RPM energy sidearm, and mag slots can get Accurized Rounds, Alloy Magazine, Tactical Mag, and Flared Magwell. And then from the notable trade slots, in slot 1 you can get Auto Loading Holster, and maybe Hipfire Grip, but Threat Detector and especially Demolitionist are very good, especially when you pair it with some of the slot 2 bonuses, so you can get Surrounded. That has the potential to be really pretty solid in PvE or PvP, and once again paired with Demolitionist it could be pretty fun. But you can see right there the other bonuses, things like Dragonfly, Vorpal Weapon, Elemental Capacitor, Snapshot, and even Zen Moment. For the Hand Cannon, the 7th Seraph Office Revolver, it is a 180 Kinetic Hand Cannon, which is interesting. 
It can roll small bore, hammer forged, and corkscrew rifling. And then in the mags, you can get accurized rounds, which is good. But also tactical mag would be all right. And then in the trait slots, things get kind of interesting. So you can get firmly planted, pulse monitor, underdog, ambitious assassin, fourth times the charm, and threat detector in slot one, with feeding frenzy, vorpal weapon, osmosis, which is an interesting one, and then timed payload, high impact reserves, and multi kill clip in slot two. So you could play around with firmly planted, ambitious assassin, or fourth times the charm, depending on exactly what you're playing. And then in slot two, multi kill clip could be pretty interesting. And timed payload is also different for a faster firing hand cannon. Could be a potentially interesting weapon on console, but We'll see once we get our hands on it. But finally, for the seventh Seraph Saw, this is a 360 RPM machine gun. Especially in the traits, has the potential to get interesting. We've got Grave Robber, Zen Moment, Clown Cartridge, Auto Loading Holster, and Field Prep in the first slot. Then Vorpal Weapon, Opening Shot, Mulligan, Disruption Break, Firing Line, and Elemental Capacitor in the second slot. So. Clown Cartridge, Zen Moment, Auto Loading Holster, and maybe playing around with Field Prep could be pretty interesting. Vorpal Weapon obviously could be pretty good in PvP, but Firing Line is kind of a unique one here. Obviously we'd have to see what the damage values could look like, but maybe a few players with Zen Moment and Firing Line on one of these could put out a decent amount of damage. Nonetheless, that does break down the bunker weapons that you get from frames specifically, and the perks that can actually roll out on them. If you want to check out all of the available perks, then I will link like GG down below, which is a really, really good Destiny database. We also have weapons that come from the Season Pass, though. So we have the shotgun, and this is an energy lightweight frame shotgun. You can get rifled barrel, but also full choke and corkscrew rifling. And then we also have accurized rounds there. And then perks like quick draw, lead from gold, and slide shot are going to be pretty interesting in the first slot. They can also be paired with Snapshot and Trench Barrel, probably most notable in that second slot. So those are potential roles that you could get randomly from engrams and caches once you've unlocked the weapons in the Season Pass. And of course there is the Submachine Gun as well, so it's 600 rate of fire. And really the standout perks would probably be Ambitious Assassin in the first slot, and then Dragonfly, just because it's a little bit different in that second slot. With it being 600 RPM, it is a little bit different. We don't have quite so many 600 RPM SMGs in the game, but I think on the most part, there probably are slightly better ones than this. The only other bunker-related loot items that we immediately know about would be the ones unlocked via the main quest line for the season, and this has us upgrading the bunkers which essentially will require us to ultimately upgrade all of them once they release. So there are time locks on various items this season, and it's best to refer to the roadmap to see what's going to drop and when. We should mention that the point of the stag is going to be the Iron Banner Ritual Bow by the looks of things for this season. We're waiting for Bungie to reveal details about any quests or how we actually unlock it, but it is a precision frame bow. It comes with elastic string and then natural fletching. And in the first trait slot, you have no distractions, and Archer's Tempo, but the second slot comes with Vorpal Weapon and Eye of the Storm. And so we'll be looking out for that one once Iron Banner rolls around. Let us know your thoughts on it down below. Now though, let's speak about Trials rewards, and we are going to talk about pretty much all of the items you can obtain. But firstly, Trials weapons and armor are listed as dropping by completing Trials challenges. Once you obtain Trials items, they also unlock in the Trials Engram that you can pick up by turning in Trials tokens, and we earn these via matches and Trials bounties. So that's generally how it will work, but we're not sure if Trials Challenges refers to specific challenges or whether it just generally means playing Trials. However, there are a series of different record triumphs for Trials that you can see on screen, so that's a general breakdown of how it's going to work, but Let's briefly discuss some cosmetic items. So if you manage to go flawless and open the chest in the lighthouse, you can pick up the Resurrection's Guide. And this is a new exotic sparrow, which is pretty cool right there. Nice to earn some of these items via gameplay. We also have the lantern shell though, and the source says win matches in the Trials of Osiris. And so it's something that we can pick up as we play through Trials. But then there are a couple of different Trials emblems. We have the flawless Empyrean, which presumably you'll get when you go flawless. And additionally, the hardened by trial emblem, which appears to be a reward that we'll unlock via playing Trials in general. Of course, for Trials 2.0 armor, we can preview it in the game, and it looks like it's going to accept Trials of the Nine ornaments as well, so you can check that ornament slot out in the game, and that's pretty cool. But otherwise, we're left with the Trials weapons and perk rolls, and once again, the weapons are going to be unlocked via playing matches, completing challenges. Of course, the Lighthouse chest itself, and once certain loot items are acquired, you can get random rolls of them via the Trials Engram. First up, we have the Summoner. And in D2, it's a 600 rate of fire adaptive solar auto rifle. And of course, auto rifles right now are doing pretty well with some of the buffs in Season of Dawn. You can roll perks like Arrowhead Break, Corkscrew Rifling, and Hammer Forged Rifling, but then you've got options like High Caliber Rounds, Armor Piercing Rounds, Flared Magwell, and Light Mag, followed in Trait Slot 1 
by perks like Zen Moment, and otherwise you've got options like Moving Target, Overflow, and a couple of other things, but then for Trait Slot 2, you've got bonuses like Rampage, and that's definitely going to be pretty good on these auto rifles, but otherwise Rangefinder, or the new perk Celerity, and you gain the following effects while you are the last living member of your fire team, so increased target acquisition, handling and reload speed, and reduced flinch from incoming fire. So that right there is a pretty cool bonus, essentially the new version of Last Guardian standing weapon bonuses from D1. But then we have the Eye of Sol, which is the new sniper rifle. It is an adaptive frame, but it goes in the kinetic slot. There has been some feedback about just how many of the trial's weapons actually do go in the kinetic slot. But it is capable of rolling snapshot, and you otherwise have outlaw, even hipfire grip in that first slot, as well as firmly planted. And then second trait slot bonuses are Vorpal Weapon. Once again, Celerity, we've got Box Breathing and Opening Shot. The Astral Horizon Shotgun could be pretty good for PvP, so it's Aggressive Frame Kinetic once again. Rifled Barrel is present, but it also has Full Choke and Corkscrew Rifling, as well as the all-important Accurized Rounds. And then in Trait Slot 1, you can roll Slide Shot, but also Quick Draw and Threat Detector. Obviously, depending on PvE or PvP preferences, you might want to go with different stuff, because in Trait Slot 2, you can get Opening Shot, Swashbuckler, Celerity once again, and 1-2 Punch. So there are indeed a few different options there. Exile's Curse is the new high-impact arc fusion rifle, though. This can roll with hammer forged rifling, corkscrew, and even small bore. And projection fuse can roll in the battery slot as well, so that'll be pretty nasty. And then you can roll bonuses like firmly planted in trait slot 1. Otherwise, you've got field prep, underdog, no distractions, grave robber, and threat detector. Definitely a mixed bag once again. And trait slot 2 can roll snapshot, celerity, and feeding frenzy. But otherwise, you have elemental capacitor. Multi-kill clip, and disruption break there. The Scholar is going to be an interesting one, of course. 150 high-impact kinetic scout rifle. It can roll arrowhead break, which might not be bad for recoil, but otherwise, perks like corkscrew rifling, polygonal rifling are probably going to be generally pretty good options. And then the mag slot can roll high-caliber rounds, flared mag well for stability, and faster reloads. And trait slot 2 can roll quick draw, opening shot, and full auto could be interesting. Also, maybe no distractions could be interesting, but you've got snapshot and celerity present there as well. There's also tomorrow's answer, the rocket launcher. You've got volatile launch, confined launch, countermass, hard launch, linear compensator, quick launch, and smart drift control, alloy casing, black powder, high velocity rounds, implosion rounds, and impact casing. And you can roll out with rangefinder or tracking, and then cluster bomb or snapshot. You've also got things like underdog, moving target, genesis, field prep, disruption break. Man, some of these rocket launchers are really funky. Shield disorient. Threat Detector and Clown Cartridge. So you may be able to pull some useful stuff out of there. But what do you guys think about the Trials weapons once again? I know there has been a bit of feedback, especially about the fact that you've got so many things in the Kinetic slot. But nonetheless, it'll be good to get our hands on them and try them out again in Destiny 2. But you have reprised a bunch of Faction and Year 1 weapons into the loot pools. The G drop as well drops, so you can get them in Engrams and things like that. But also from Warmind Caches and Seraph Towers. And so they've reprised the True Prophecy hand cannon, as well as Enigma's Draw. That's the sidearm, and both of those are FWC weapons. We also have Escape Velocity, the submachine gun from Dead Orbit, Timeline's Vertex, the fusion rifle from Future War Cult, as well as the GN7, the new Monarchy Pulse rifle, and then we have the Distant Tumulus Sniper from Dead Orbit, the Interference Grenade Launcher from New Monarchy, the Honor's Edge Sword from New Monarchy, and of course, Dire Promise from Dead Orbit. For today though guys, that's everything we have to round up in this video, so I hope you guys enjoy it as always, and if you have enjoyed it, a rating below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel and you want to be kept up to date with the world of Destiny 2, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. But for now, I appreciate you tuning in guys, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.